beautiful souls. Today we'll be making this train case. It is designed by Ida who was created to create here on YouTube and she is my friend. The link to purchase the SVG file will, will be in the description panel below. This has a tray in the inside. It also has a box that goes in the middle, but I omitted that. It's, you know, it's if you want to have dividers and it's and to hold this tray up. But what I've done is I added magnets, magnets instead to hold the tray up. So I omitted that part. And it does have um, a file, you know, to create a paper handle. But I omitted that too. I'm going to make my handles my handle using these this is not completed yet and of course as you can see it's not embellished and although you see the thumbnail of the train case is completed with embellishments uh, this will this is only a tutorial here and it will be followed by a separate a separate process video creating this with fabric I will then do a project share um, showing everything completed in its full glory. Okay, the paper I did use is um, Sweetie from Stamperia, and this is actually printed. I scanned the papers in and then I converted it to, um, I scaled it to fit an eight and a half by 11 sheet so that I can print them out. So when that paper pack is finished, so that I will always, always have it in the, you know, if I want to use it in the future. Okay. So let's go on and cut these pieces out and assemble it. Ida has formatted the pattern pieces to fit in a 12 by 12 cardstock sheet. I don't have cardstock sheets in white. So what I've done is I rearranged the pattern pieces to fit in a eight and a half by 11 standard shot size cardstock. So if you do not have 12 by 12 sheets either, or in white or the color that you want, but you have it in the eight and a half by 11 sheet, you may want to take a screenshot when these get cut out so you can see how I had arranged them. That way you don't have to guess it. So I've done the work for you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our base color and we're going to need five of those for, for the 11 and a half. I'm sorry, the 11 inch by eight and a half sheets. That is for this one only. So you would need six sheets of those. I'm not sure how much you would need if you had a 12 by 12. The first cut we're going to make is going to be the lid sides and the bottom sides. And this is how I aligned or arranged them to fit in the 8.5 by 11 sheet. So you can watch this video again or you can just do a screenshot. And that way you don't have to figure out how to do that. Okay. So I'm going to go and press cut and start. And again, you're going to cut this out twice. I already cut out the first set. patterns I'm going to cut out are the top and bottom. This is, and I make sure, always make sure that, um, you know, you have your paper going in the right direction. This is the long, wait, this is the eight, um, I'm sorry, this is the eight, I said it again. This is the 11 inch side. So 
So before we do our second pattern cut, I want to mention that I did cut out another set. So instead of six, eight and a half by 11, you would need seven. Of course, this is optional. I just want it super duper crazy sturdy. Okay, so I did go ahead and do that. So for the second cut, this is going to be the inside tray. And of course, this is optional. So you might want to take a screenshot of that one. These got cut out. These are the tray sides, and now I'm gonna do the the um, the oval for the for the bottom of the tray, and it's gonna cut out twice, as you can see here. Okay, and you only need to cut this one out once because it has two in one sheet. Okay, well, two patterns for you to cut it out on one sheet. Alrighty then. All your base layers are, are cut out now. Now to cut out the layers, you would use the same pattern for the base layer. You would just need to cut off like this part here. You will cut it off right where that, um, come on, where that, where it looks like a stitching line, that is the score line. And you would just cut from there you know, and just take this off, and this will be your layers. You would have to uh, cut this these these pieces out again in your designer paper. I forgot to mention, yeah, well, you will cut this out in your designer paper, and then just trim that off. If you have the know-how and how to create patterns on your or any of your electric. Uh, electronic cutting machines then you will go ahead and do that there that way you just you don't have to um do it manually so i went ahead and created my layers because i know how to make patterns here on the brother scanner cut as well so i made the layers for that and i made two sets of layers i made layers where it's going to fit from here to that stitching line or the score line um, just about perfect and then I made another layer to go on top of that which is smaller it's 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 gonna be thinner so that's what I went ahead and did so you're gonna have to um, you know like do that one on your own but it's fairly easy uh, just refer back to the video if you don't understand and the other thing is you're going to see how I put it together. So you, you will get an idea of what I mean when it comes to layering and cutting out your layers. So now we're going to go and assemble the train case. My bad people, there's one more piece to cut out. And that is this piece here which is the box that, that goes inside of the train case. That is where your tray is going to sit on top of. It's going to elevate your tray. Okay, and of course this is optional and so is the tray. I'm going to start off with the bottom part of the train case. I do want to mention because I didn't I totally forgot that it does come with a strap for the handle but I didn't cut that out because I'm not going to use it just to let you know okay and it helps if you do label them so you don't you know get confused um, I know lately my the my video quality has been poor because of the lighting I have so many lights in here. This looks like the sun is shining in here, but for some reason, it's not reflecting through the camera. It doesn't reflect through the camera that it's really bright in in here. Anyway, um, so I did a rough 
dra a, a rough, um, a dry run, rather. And I noticed that um, there are score lines here, but I cannot glue it where the score line is because then it's this is too short. It's not going to go around. So I'm moving it about an, um, a little bit over an eighth of an inch. And there's still, you know, room for you, for you to glue. And for this, I will be using wet glue to do that, to make sure that it does adhere. I don't trust the double-sided tape for that because it is a small space, you know, to glue. And for the bottom parts, I don't normally use double-sided tape, but for that, I believe that is the best thing to use. It's easier and quicker okay so I'm gonna go ahead and add the glue so that's done now what I want to do next is um, I want to curl the paper. So this is a very handy dandy tool. It's uh, by Sizzix. It was des um, designed by one of their designers. I don't remember his name. But you don't have to use that. You can use your bone folder too. If you don't have that, this really helps everything go along around the, um, the bottom. Okay, wait. Before I uh, turn that in, I am going to add the double-sided tape to that. I'm just using a quarter inch wide. And burnish the score tape so it adheres really, really well to the paper. And add it under the score line. Okay? And I'm going to bend this this way. And I'm going to start adding this on here very slowly. I'm going to start off. I'm going to guesstimate the center of here. So the bottom is done. I'm going to guess when we add the layers and it'll take form. It'll take its shape. It's a little bit too oval, but it'll take its shape. All right, now that's what the bottom looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do the top. I'm going to do it in the same manner that I did this. So the top is completed as well. And the difference between 
this the top and and the bottom um, of this template here from the tray is that the tray is smaller and the tray has notches on it so you will not get that confused at all okay I did go ahead and start layering the outside and I also used something that's you know uh, round to give it this shape this is the beauty of using wet glue is that when you form it it's gonna dry like that and it gives it more of a sturdiness because this dries you know like crispy <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it but it dries crispy so it gives it more of a stiffness so I'm using this to create and maintain the shape of the of the um, train so this is starting to take shape what I discovered is when when I look at this part alone doesn't it remind you of something it reminds me of an ice cream box <laughs> but that would be so cute to to turn this into an ice cream box you would have to of course make the adjustments for this make it a little bit bigger and the sides a little bit bigger so that it goes you know it um, completely closes as opposed to staying on top um, and then fill it up with ice cream themed embellishments OMG that's so cute <laughs> so so here we are um, we are almost you know done here we just got to put this you can go ahead and layer in the inside because the box that holds the, the train the the tray is gonna go right on top so this can get glued down remember in the beginning when I was cutting these out and I cut this out twice which you don't have to because you can go ahead and just layer this here but because I want it super duper sturdy I'm gonna glue this here and then glue this here the same thing with this but I'm not gonna glue the inside for this you can glue here you can like I said you can glue this here but I will not glue this here because if I want a handle and I want to cut through this um, I don't want it to cut through this I want this to hide whatever is underneath there okay so again I will glue this to the second set that I cut out and glue this here and I was going to do the tray off camera but there's something that's different in assembling these parts than it was assembling these so for this one you're actually going to take um, the strip um, close to the score line here as opposed to when we did it here we did it away like uh, an eighth of an inch away so this one is actually going to go fully around by budding one of the uh, tray sides against the score line okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one So there you have it and this is actually a little bit wider but that's fine and originally I did add glue to the edge but I think the double-sided tape is, is better because you're gonna if you're using wet glue for the layers it's gonna go over it anyway so it, it'll um, keep it together it's not gonna fall apart all right so this is the tray and it should fit in the inside wham look at that Ida like seriously you did an amazing job in creating this train case I absolutely love it and I'm enjoying putting it together 
Look at that. Woo! <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and of course, this is going to have layers. Um, this, you can just layer, you know, uh, completely. You don't have to, you can do inside and outside because this is not going to have, um, you know, like a metal pieces to it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. And I also, um, this, the file for this already has two of these. So I'm going to glue this here like I did, you know, with this, with the extra um, uh, piece. And just glue it in there. And of course, this gets glued in here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to add magnets in, in the tray. And then I'm going to add the magnets in here. So that's what's going to hold this up. So I am not going to do this part, which is, this is like really self-explanatory. Um, you know, you would assemble this box like so. And then you would put it in here. But you would put this last because remember you can't put the paper in here until you, you decide what closure you're going to put. And if you got to pierce holes, it's going to show on this side and you don't want it to pierce a hole on the layer um, that you, you know, put in here. You, you know, it's going to look tacky. So once you did your closure and you have your layers in there, then you, you know, you would assemble this, glue it together, and then you would put it in here. That's how that works. Okay, this is um, like a separate compartment in there. And then your tray would fit right on top. See? But I don't want to do that. Because um, my tray, I want it to be higher. It's going to be much higher. And, um, you know, with this, it's a little too low. For, for what I want to do. So I want to, you know, fill this up with embellishments and then fill this up with embellishments too. But I want the whole thing. Um, um, I want to be able to put embellishments here that I know I don't have to worry about if it's going to fit or not with this thing in here. Okay, but if you want to do that, you can. This could be a nice sewing kit as well. You can, well, you can use it as a sewing kit and put your little you know, sewing stuff here and here and here. Make little compartments. You can make compartments in here too. I'm not going to do that. I'm keeping it very, very simple. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you want to put magnets, you put them here before you put your layers in. Remember that. So now they don't show once you put your layers in. Okay? So to, to create this lip here... I'm going to do this, um, I want to create that, because that will keep this even, you know, um, a lot more sturdier when it's closed, and it will be all even together with, with the bottom, so I'm going to actually do this. So what I did here was, you take an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Um, decorative paper or you can cut down your 12 by 12 to an eight and a half by 11 right then the direction of your paper that's um, you know that's upright you're going to turn it this way and then you're going to score at four and an eighth And you're going, to, you're going to fold it. You're going to have this extra. So that extra, you know, this, this white part is going to go in the inside. So you don't see it in there. It's nice and clean. All right. So that's, you're going to make, you're going to do two of those. And I'm not going to put these in yet because I still, I'm still I don't know how I'm gonna hinge this yet so when I figure that out I will come back and show you how I'm gonna put the magnet in in inside of here where it doesn't show I don't want to put the magnet 
directly here because this is going to be too bulky and this is going to be on top and it might not be strong enough for this to catch okay so I found these little hinges um, in my stash and I just I'm gonna put brads because of course I can't put in the screw it's it's gonna you know it's a little bit too long but what I did was I, I aligned it down here first on the bottom part and then I used some washi tape to you know to keep this in place because remember we have to align this perfectly here so I want to make sure it's you know gonna gonna fit the way it's supposed to fit all right so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that and then make my holes and then add these and now I can finish the inside well except for the front I still have to do the front as well um, the closure for the front so I got to figure out what I'm gonna put there so I'll be back once I do this and figure out the closure for the front and I'll go ahead and do that in advance okay Put the second layer here and I put um, E6000 which is this product here in between the hinge and the paper so it's it's in there so this won't move okay now that we have done that which is what I wanted to do before I put the magnets in the inside I went also ahead and glued this part this piece down I did do, do that so now we're going to put the magnet you already know I left you off with um, with this having the magnets in it already the tray the tray so um, I'm going to glue this on but not this part I'm gonna glue this to this afterwards I'm just gonna glue this in here first like so okay I'm, I'm don't add glue here so then you won't be able to open this back up <laughs> I made a boo boo don't add glue up here either dum da dum dum <laughs> no glue there here you I can and over here but not there mm -mm -mm. okay so now this is what we're going to do See, I'm going to put the magnets outside. Add the tape to the magnet. And because I can see the score line here, I know where I'm going to place this.
I'm gonna go a little bit under right there press that in fairly even to me so now the magnets are in place and now I can glue this down Once this is closed, everything aligns really nicely. Ta-da! Magic! I have this attached now. It has uh, the brads in it. And I did add E6000 to this as well. So there's the inside. And I went ahead and papered, layered this, um, the tray. And also... This is what I'm going to do. Since I already had layered the outside before thinking about how I'm going to have this, you know, suspended without the box in the middle. Um, it's better if the magnet is actually out here than in here. Because the less layers between the magnet, it's going to be stronger to catch here. So... I'm actually going to add these extra magnets even though I have already added them in here because look how much stronger this is. It catches much quicker and there's a little bit of resistance. So when I put stuff in here, this is not going to fall in even though like I said before, I'm going to have stuff in on, you know, inside the case where it's going to hold it up but this so if there's nothing in it at all down here but i have stuff up here it's still not going to go there's um this uh, you know quite a bit of resistance here okay so i wanted to mention that um this is pretty much it all i got to do is um line this up you know with the with the layers so Oh yeah, and also I added the ribbons in inside here before I added the layer, okay? Be so that it could be nice and attractive. And now I can just pull it up this way. Isn't that neat? That's awesome! <laughs> I love it. Look at that. I love, love, love this. This is like... Uh, Ida really outdid herself with this file here. Links to the, uh, to purchase this file, it's an SVG file, will be in the description panel below as well because you know you want to make this. You know you do. Okay? And then the one made with a uh, fabric and the project share after this is, you know, um, embellished will also be linked in the description box or the description panel below so love is the key let's share be fair be filled with love and love one another take good care everybody